Aloha Honolulu Data here with episode 5 of the Honolulu Huskies Custom Fantasy Draft Franchise Mode here in the year number 2, the beginning of year number 2, the 2020-2021 regular season. In the last episode we had a big draft where we ended up trading up a few spots, 6 spots to be exact, and we drafted Cole Perfetti. But then we had questions about what is our lineup going to look like, and according to the trade block and so forth, who should we go after so starting off in the comments here Jack Ryu says a uh, Goligoski might be worth it because he's a good second line D and since he's old he's probably cheap and then you can also trade him since he has only one year left on his deal so I could get rid of him after he drops he then adds saying also Cassian would be a good fourth liner to get it to a zero or plus one because he's a grinder and also a big guy who can lay the body a lot so I'll address the second comment first I was thinking yeah it definitely makes sense he's an 80 overall better than Della Rose but if I put a grinder with a two-way and a power forward I don't think that's going to work because when I go two-way, two-way grinder, it gives it a negative one with Dustin Brown as a grinder before. And then if I sw even if I put Chase on as a power forward, I go power forward. I can't even put Chase on. I need, it would be Dubinsky, Brown, and Cassian. So it would be grinder, power forward, two-way. And in offensive lineup management, I don't think that's going to keep it at a zero. I think it would bring it to a negative one even. So I think the fourth line for now, I'm going to keep it like this, even though it's not ideal. Cassian would be great, but not with this coach. The first comment, though, about uh, Alex Goligoski definitely makes sense. I'm in the market to trade Braden Coburn at the age of 35. As much as he's pretty decent, and 81, whatever, he's an old guy, still working hard. As cool as that is, he's probably about to retire, and he fits the lineup, but definitely would be the better choice to move on from him, I think. So Braden Cor Coburn is... Uh, an option, uh, sorry, Golgowski is an option to get for Coburn. Another comment, though, coming from Michael Bruno Vaselli, he says Justin Braun has a decent salary for two years. He could replace Coburn. So maybe instead of Golgowski, I go after Braun. Now, Braun is not anything too, too special if I go to the player search here. I know Justin Braun, he, I believe he's 80 overall, and I think he's 33, 32, 33 years old. So it's not much of an upgrade, but it is better, I'd say. Justin Braun here, he plays on the Hurricanes. He's 81 overall. Justin Braun, he's 33 years old, defensive defenseman, 81 overall. Last season with Carolina, he scored 25 points, was a plus 10, it's not bad at all. And his contract is two more years at 2.52. So that's an option. But the thing is, I don't know if I want... Yeah, I guess it's not bad. Two years would be the max. It's because I don't want anyone more than that because I have a lot of defensemen coming up the pipeline. Uh, Braun is an option, but I do also like Goligoski because he is an offensive defenseman and a legend overall. Alex Goligoski doesn't have a lot of trade value either. Also plays on the Hurricanes. 83 overall, he's the same age as Coburn, but he's you know, on his last year at 5.4. I definitely have the cap space this season, and he had 28 points last season. Maybe in our lineup he could do even more. So I'm inclined to go after Goligoski instead of Braun, even though Braun is also a smart move. And then the last comment from last video coming from my good friend Yirka Halby, he says tough off season and more about the playoffs, but down at the bottom he says he wants to see the stats of Martin Firk from last season and good luck for the next season. So thank you very much Yirka, but I'm going to look at Firk's uh, stats, that is what he has requested. Martin Firk plays on the San Jose Sharks, he's 80 overall, he's 26 years old, and last season he scored 20 goals, 25 assists, wow, that is really good. 45 points for Martin Firk last season, so eat your heart out, uh, Yirka. enjoy. 45 points in 82 games for Martin Firk. Good job, Marty. Good season from him. So for this season, like we said, the forwards are pretty much going to stay as they are to begin, but I would like to go after Alex Goligoski from the Hurricanes. So we're going to see what would that cost so we can get this season started and see what we're going to look like. Alex Goligoski, he's on the block, which is a huge plus, especially when you're on hard trading. Uh, trading is set to hard. Coburn goes back the other way. Already, it's about half the trade value, so you're on the right path. Don't have a lot of rookie skaters, like people who I could just trade, who I just drafted. You know, like these guys, you know, Stoll, maybe that would be a good guy to throw in. I don't want to give up too much. I shouldn't take much. Like, this is pretty close. I know they're not interested in it, but this should be pretty close. Trade rejected. We have, man, if we did that trade, we'd be at 69 million. In the future, that's not even close. To, like, in 20 years, you need to be at 85, 90 million just to reach the cap floor. Uh, can I throw in one of the fifths since I got two fifths now? 
Uh, trade doesn't meet our trade block at all. That's the only problem. The trade value is there, just that it doesn't meet the trade block. Not very interested. If I try the fourth and the fifth for Alex Goligoski, uh, you're quite far off in value, eh? Not fun, because Stoll just adds nothing. I could give a third, it wouldn't be the worst to give Coburn in a third for Goligoski. I could try that, it's quite close to trade to fair value. Ah, a third and a fifth would almost definitely get it done. I hate giving up so many picks though, especially early in a franchise mode with a team that isn't very good. Thir okay, so we'll give up a third and a fifth, we'll get back a seventh, and we get Alex Goligoski on this team. Braden Coburn, thank you for your year of service here. Goligoski, I'm looking for big things from you this year, my friend. And let's get him into the lineup. Let's fix up the power play, all that stuff where he will play. And then we'll begin this season. All right, so we are looking good. On defense, Goligoski paired with Scandella gives it a plus five. Beautiful. So Klingberg's playing like a 93. Edmondson's in like an 86. Goligoski's playing like an 88. Scandella like an 85. Sider and Tanev on the bottom pair getting plus ones. Now on the power play... It, we could go, it was plus one before, with Goligoski instead of Tanev it goes up to plus three, which is amazing. Or, I could put Goligoski on the top pair and give it a plus five, meanwhile the bottom pair still gets the plus three. Could I switch Rantanen and Drouet? I could, because I want Rantanen to get that top unit time since he's on the second line. I could switch Drouet with Sammy Blay. Okay, yes. This is what we're going to do. We're going to put Drouet with Dano, Varana, Blake, Balik. I know two forwards isn't the best, but it keeps the plus three. Hopefully that works out. We go plus five, plus three. Oh, yes. We are looking good in Honolulu, boys. Plus five, plus three, plus one, zero, plus five, plus five, plus one. Absolutely beautiful. So hopping into this next season, I just want to quickly look at how our created players have grown. I just want to go to player search. We're going to sort by franchise potential. I want to see who has grown. They all started at 85. They're all the same age. They're all the same potential. I want to see, because Duke Silver is at an 89 now, who else has grown and who hasn't grown so much. So I believe they're 19 years old now. So let's just look at franchise potential, 17 to 19. Yeah, okay, here we go. Sorting by overall. So Duke Silver and Jin Kyo Chong are both 89 overall. Jin Kyo Chong is up to high franchise potential. That is absolutely wild. Jin Kyo Chong, 89 high franchise, 49, 46 points last season. Uh, okay, him and Duke Silver at the top. So we got lucky, Duke Silver is at the top. He was the last guy available. Uh, and the 88s are pretty much everyone with uh, Bio, Cornell, Gerante, Mongo, Beats, Johnson, Anderson, Cherry. Shout out to happy birthday to Rory Cherry. Shout out happy birthday to Rory Cherry today. Then down at 87, you have Klingenberg, Gupta, Bruno. And then at 86, D'Angelo Vickers, who I thought was the well, probably the best guy that I created. He's only at an 86, listed as a top 4D. Tough. And then for the goalies, uh, both Tommy and Fontaine are at 88 overall. All right, so that's a little update for all you guys who are interested in seeing those players. As we go throughout the season, I'm sure we'll bump into them a lot more often. But starting off the season at Rogers Place in Edmonton, year number two in Honolulu. We squeaked into the playoffs last year. I'm thinking that we're going to see big things from the Huskies this season. Here we go, first period, 2 nothing Oilers. Martin Jones might be our downfall, and I'm not going to be afraid to change... Uh, the goaltending situation on our team if we have to. Second period, we get a goal from Phil Deneau. We are down by one. Jack Eichel makes it 3-1. to one. We're out shooting them 33-19. to 19. There he is, Jake Gensel on the power play. Pass Braden Holtby. We're down by one. Out shooting them pretty well still. As we move into the final half of the third period. First game of the season here at Rogers. Come on, boys. Power play. All those pluses. Can't get it. 43 to 26 of the shots now. Oh my goodness. And we lose the first game of the season out shooting them like crazy. Brayden Holpe makes 42 saves. But hey, you win some, you lose some. The scouts are sent out. The coaches are set. Everything's good. We're going to let the, uh, the AI take the reins for a little bit. Nikolai Kravchenko signs on. Let's go see the Nashville Predators. And then the Ruslana Prospo Proposal, whatever these people's names are, these coaches for the AHL sign on. We'll go to the Nashville Predators. I know they're a, uh, a, a fan favorite with Ellis Anderson, the two-way D, in, uh, on the top pair. So let's go see them. We start off, our first win came against the Blue Jackets. We beat the, oh, Dubinsky, a third. A th no, are you serious? Oh, well, actually, 
Michael McLeod's not a not a bad prospect at all. I don't like giving up two thirds and a fourth. Michael McLeod's a top six prospect, 22 years old. Ah, it's tough to say no to these, but I can't. I, I have I have the youth on my team. I don't need to do that to trade all those picks. Uh, Sorella mild concussion. So what I was saying. Uh, but, but, no, so what I was saying there, we beat the Blue Jackets, we beat the Leafs 6-1, to one. we lose to the Canadians 4-3 in overtime in a shootout, then a loss to the Caps, a win against the Hawks, a win against the Sabres, a loss against the Hurricanes, Goligoski's old team, beat the Kings, losing a shootout to the Flames, we're 5-3-2, and two, then we get shut out 5 to nothing against the Capitals. Let's see what we can do against the Predators, who are 4-5-0. We are 5-4-2. First period, 2-2. Two two. Duke Silver and Dominic Kubalik score for us. Josh Bailey and Noel Achari on Elvis Mers Lincoln. Second period, Ranton starts it off. And then Couture gets one and Kubalik gets another for his second of the game. We are up 4-3. to three. Brent Burns ties this game up at four, though. Burns and Anderson, monsters on the back end in Nashville. 4-4, four four. Mark Stone. Makes it 5-4. Five, five goals on 29 shots against Elvis Mers Lincolns, who for some reason does not simulate like a god in this franchise mode, but in other franchise modes he does. So that's the way the news goes, I guess. And unless we see some heroics here, we drop this game by a score of 5-4. to four. Two goals for Kubalik, three assists for Ellis Anderson, big night for him, and three assists for John Klingberg. So continue on simulating. I'd like to get a lot done. At, well, I've got to go through this whole season, so the faster the better. Let's go see Rory Cherry and the Ottawa Senators to wish him a happy birthday. Sammy Blay injured knee, not out for long, so that's okay. You just, just make a little switch here, slip and slide. Shiaison comes into the lineup, and yeah, we'll just keep him there. Zeros and zeros. I hate that it doesn't replace every, the player that you want to put everywhere. Now, who am I going to put for two games here? Chris Tanev, why not? You can play a couple games, why not? So we beat the Avalanche 5-2, we lost to the Stars 6-2, which is pretty rough. Sammy Blay is about to come back. We lose that game against the Panthers in a shootout. We're, gonna, we're at 15 games so far in the season. We're going to take a break after the game against the Senators to take, a, to take an evaluation of how we're looking. We got two injuries in that game, Edmondson and uh, Shirelli. So who can play center here? De La Rose could play center, can't he? Yeah, he can play center. Sammy Blaze supposedly could play... No, he can't play center. So, actually, could anyone else play center? No, I'm not going to risk it. Okay, so Shiesan will come in on the forwards. He'll play on the fourth line. And then on defense, uh, Scandella will go there. And Andreas Borgen, is he a two-way D? Yeah, so he should fit the plus... Just a plus one, huh? Okay, so we'll go like that. Okay, we'll go plus five, plus one, and plus three on the bottom pair. Unless anything else makes it better. No, that's what we're going to do. Okay, it's a bit of a buzz as both those guys are out. I don't even know what they're both injured with. We beat Buffalo 7-3. to three. We lose 3-1 to the Red Wings. Mild concussion for Edmondson. He's back November 11th. Shirelli, they, only, they haven't even told me yet. Days later, pending evaluation. I'm the general manager of this team. Can you not tell me, like, an upper body, lower body, concussions, broken arm, broken spine, broken scapula, broken tibia, nothing? Edmondson back? That's not true. He's not back until the 11th. Uh, we beat the Flyers 2-1 in a shootout, and then we lose 6-5 to the Rangers, as Edmondson will come back. With Edmondson back in the lineup against the Predators, we lose 6-3, and Michael Dalcombe, Malcolm, man, what is with all these injuries? Sometime I go a whole year without an injury, and then sometimes it's every, literally every day I have to stop to make uh, some sort of switch. Engstrom, come on in, you made the lineup. Oh, my goodness. Whatever, man, best lines. I can't be bothered to change every single line for an injury where a guy's going to be out for two days. Sorelli's available. I never even knew what he was out for. Whatever. Okay, we're 8, 9, and 3, which is pretty revolting, up against the 10, 8, and 0 oh, Ottawa Senators. So, happy birthday, Rory Cherry. Let's see what you can do on your big day. Sam Gerrard scores on the first shot of the game. Beautiful. And 3 to 2, Rory Cherry scores a nice birthday goal. Phil Dano and Sammy Blaze score for us on Sandro Tommy. Down 3 to 2. Second period, down 4 to 3. Alex Steen scores for them, and Marco Scandella for us. We are down by one five on three power play. Have to capitalize. There we go. Drew on the power play. This game tied at four now. Shots are even as well. And Jeff Skinner. Great. Jeff Skinner. Puts him up by one. Five goals and 28 shots. If we lose this game and we go two goals under two games under 500, 
Okay, Rory Cherry gets a power play goal. Ranton gets a power play goal, and we lose six to five. Two goals and two assists for Rory Cherry on his birthday. Got to give it to him. Sammy Blay, a goal and two assists. We lose six to five. So now it's time to reevaluate this team and what are we going to do moving forward? Because eight, ten, and three is pretty rough. Miko Rantanen through 21 games leads our team in points with 26. Duke Silver has 19. Drew has 18. Klingberg 18, which is nice. Deno 15. Let's look at these plus minuses. Kubalik, nine goals, one assist, negative five. What's going on? Galagoski plus four at least. Uh, man, Moritz Sider, negative nine. What? Negative nine. Playing with Chris Tanev, who with the 88 defensive awareness. Ay, ay, ay. Disgusting. Okay, who's who's doing who's having a tough time here? Both these goalies are literally disgusting. Six, seven, and two with an 894 save percentage. This guy's two, three, and one with an 896 save percentage. Oh man, Martin Jones, I love your contract, but I'm sick of you. So what I'm gonna do now, I gotta browse through the trade blocks. I'm gonna look at the trade finder. I need to see what could I get for Martin Jones and who can I go after because I need a better goalie on this team. I need to also look at who the good goalies in the NHL are, who's simulating well. I get a third and a fourth from Ottawa or Carolina. Definitely don't want those. I have to look at the entire NHL and see who's a goalie that's who the algorithms like this year. In this season, who, who's the 81 overall that has 10 shutouts? And go trade for him since he won't have a lot of value. Let's see. Rory Cherry leads the NHL in points. And Miko Ranson's actually tied for NHL lead in points. That's pretty cool. Goalies, let's see, leading in wins, Vasilevsky, Darcy Kemper, Braden Holtby, Varlamov, 85, Quick, Quick should be cheap, 83, but he's 34, Gibson, Markstrom, Rene, Samsonov, uh, Robin Lehner, no, Thomas Grice, maybe, still though, he's 34, those guys are old. Tough year for goalies, look at these records, 6-9-1 and one is David Riddick, I guess I should look at the numbers a little bit more, let's say, um... Minimum games, let's say minimum games 15, can I say that? No, 20 doesn't exist. And it won't let me go back down, I gotta do the cycle again. Okay, Linus Allmark, classic Linus Allmark. He's 5, 6, and 3, but has a pretty decent record. Uh, with two years left at 1.8. Ah, you know what, he was I hated him in Anaheim, but gotta put my differences aside. Maybe Linus Allmark is the move. Tristan Jarry looks okay. Yeah, Tristan Jarry wouldn't be bad. He's 5, 3, and 1. Let me go look between Tristan Jarry and Linus Elmar. So between Montreal and Philadelphia, Eddie Fontaine, 3-8-3. Three, three. Overall means nothing, man. Overall really means nothing. I'm going to go try and make trades possibly with Montreal and Philadelphia and see what I can look at. So it looks like the move is definitely to go after Tristan Jerry. They both are almost on the same contract, uh, Jerry and Allmark are, but Jerry is two or three years younger and has the medium starter potential, while Allmark uh, is at exact starter potential. So maybe a little bit more room to grow and a little bit younger. I like Tristan Jerry a little bit more, so I'm gonna go after him. Martin Jones is almost enough in trade value, but they don't wanna trade either. You know, They don't wanna trade him, plus they don't want him. So maybe if I throw in a fourth, it'll work. I really hope so. It's just, yeah, it's not there because I uh, picks are pretty much all I have to move and I don't want to touch my first or my two seconds so I gotta try and play with the other picks that I have and make this work value is not there whatsoever yikes everyone hates Martin Jones understandably I have a first and two thirds next year but no four yeah don't like doing that I could give a third next season this is pretty much my max ay 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 my max max would be adding like a fourth and a sixth and a seventh, but I don't want to. Hopefully, I won't have to get there. Let's try the third and the fourth. Still, they're a bit off in value. Okay, so I guess I could. Looks like I'm going to be able to make it happen. Just not really excited. That's going to cost me so much. And a th so a third, a fourth, and a seventh with Martin Jones. He is off to Montreal. Welcome, Tristan Jarry, our new starting goaltender. Hopefully going to turn this ship around. And if we have to move defense, we're going to move defense. Chris Tanev, you're not looking good. I don't care. You're out of here if you have to be. Hopefully Moritz Sider can start to turn it around a little bit, but... Tristan Jarry should be a huge help. He was playing with Il uh, Elias Shesterkin, so it made sense that Montreal would move him because they don't need two uh, starting goaltender prospects like that. 
Shirelli can come back into the lineup. Still says a playable injury, whatever. We're 8, 10, and 3. Let's start turning this around, boys. Let's make the playoffs. Let's start fighting. And we are going to get some more simulation done as we'll go see Tony Klingenberg and the New Jersey Devils. Amateur Scout says it's a good year for rookies. We got shut out by the Hawks, went to nothing. We beat the Coyotes. Uh, okay, we beat the Canucks. Then we, hold on, let me go back up here. Then we lost to the Sharks, back to back. Then lost to the Kings, beat the Wild, lost to the Predators. Things aren't going too well. We're 11, 14, and four. I'm not used to this type of record. I'm really not uh, too impressed whatsoever. And then we lose two to one. What are these losses? Oh man, two to one loss against the Blues. The Jets, they beat us in overtime, 3-2. to two. And then here we are. We're 11-15-5 and five, up against the New Jersey Devils. Maybe we just tank the year and take a draft pick. But this team is good, man. We shouldn't be so bad. First period, 3-1. to one. There we go. Glancel, Shirelli, and Drew Wayne. Klingenberg scores on Tristan Jerry. Second period, 4-2. to two. Max Domi and Phil Deneau. Two Montreal Canadiens get a goal apiece for their respective teams. We're up 4-2 to two on the power play here. Okay, we're up 4-2, to two, holding it down in the third period. Klingenberg and Domi have scored for the Devils, and Phil Deneau gets another power play goal now as we are up 5-2. to two. That'll be it. 5-2 victory, finally a victory. Two goals for Deneau, 31 saves for Jerry, and a goal and an assist for Jonathan Drouin. Jonathan Drouin and De La Rose has bruised ribs. He's out till Christmas Eve. There you go, little Christmas present for you, Bello. Go ahead and put uh, Chieson in the lineup, but I think I need to take a pause because this team is really struggling and I don't know why. Let's, yeah, let's simulate just a couple days. We'll go up to the game. Let's go check out the standings and the stats. In the entire NHL, let's see where we are. We're pretty far down. Yeah, we're one of the bottom teams in the NHL. We're 12, 15, and 5. Our penalty kill is at 20.7% which is probably one of the best records. Uh, yeah, it's in the top uh, top few over here, in the top eight or whatever that is. And then our penalty kill is 80.4%, which puts us uh, not at the top, but not at the bottom either. We're a middle of the pack penalty kill team. But our power play is doing okay, so it shouldn't really be a problem. Rantanen has 37 points in 32 games. Klingenberg, sorry, John Klingberg has 29 assists and no goals through 32 games. That's wild. Gensel 24. Who has all the negatives? Is it Moritz Sider or something? What? Negative 16! Negative 16 is Moritz Sider. Oh my goodness. What? Goalies. Tristan Jerry, what has he done with us so far? He's 3 2 and 2, 9 19 save percentage. Yeah, that's alright. Merz Lincoln still pits. Man, alive. Ah, I guess Maurice Sider. I don't know. Maybe he's not ready for the NHL. He needs to get a better defenseman in there. Who might uh, put in? Andreas Borgman? I don't know. Why isn't Chris Tanev playing well, though? Jakob Vrana, 9 goals, 11 assists. Kubalik, 12 and 2. Blay, 2 and 13. This third line is not doing super well either. That plus 5 on the top line. Do I keep it or do I break it up? Like, do I break it up and go plus 3, plus 1? Uh, no one's going to give that top that second line a plus three except for Dustin Brown, who has four goals and two assists. I need to keep it like this. If I don't, it, would, it wouldn't make sense, but Maurice Sider, man. This guy's killing me. Negative 16. Andreas Borgman, what do you do? You give it a plus three? All right. Andreas Borgman, welcome to the full-time roster, my friend. Maurice Sider, you're going down to San Diego. You're going to get a little uh, conditioning done. I'm going to send you down. I'm going to call Brad Hunt up, and that's going to be... Oh, wait. Why can't I do that? Uh, I'd be under the NHL salary cap. What? Really? Okay, so I'm going to have to go and sign a free agent for like five million or something just to balance that out so let me see what i can find let's see who deserves a nice contract who's the oldest guy here in free agency chris kunitz 41 years old get in here bello get in let's go a one-way a one-way one-year deal for 7.5 million dollars the 41 year old Get back to me in a few days. Let me know if you are interested in 7.5 million to come to the islands of Honolulu and drink from the coconuts, my friend. 
So hopefully that new defense. Oh wow, wow, we lose five nothing. This is not going to be a good season, boys. I don't think we're going to be able to make it if we keep this up. Chris Kunitz is on the team, so I'm going to send down. Let me fix up these lines for a second. We beat the Penguins four to two at least. Oh boy, hopefully Borkman can, I don't know how much of a difference he's going to make, but let's sure hope so. Let's simulate to go see Mikey Bruno and the Tampa Bay Lightning. We beat Vegas 2-1 in overtime. We shut out the Leafs 3-0, which is nice. De La Rose is back in the lineup, so I'll take out Chieson, I, I think. One goal, negative four, and yeah, go ahead and take Chieson out. Put De La Rose in the lineup. Maybe I'll just trade Chieson. People want to give me a third for him, so why not? That'll be something I do at the deadline if I do. Uh, we beat the Jets 5-4 in a shootout, okay. Then a 3-2 loss to the Hawks. We're starting to turn things around just a little bit. Vegas is 22-10-4. We lose 4-3 against them. 6-3 loss to the Oilers. 3-2 shootout win against the Islanders. And now we take on the 16-16-7 Tampa Bay Lightning. We're 17-19-5. Let's go, boys. Let's see what we got, what we got in the tank First period, Jack, Jakob Vrana and Duke Silver score on Marc-Andre Fleury. Foligno gets one on us. Second period, there we go. Phil Dano, two goals from Jakob De La Rose and one from Jakob Vrana. So two goals for De La Rose, two goals for, for Vrana. And we're up 6-1, to one, stumbling over all my J names. Jakob and... Uh, uh, what's Vrana's first name? Jakob Vrana and Jakob De La Rose, but it's like with a K and a C, whatever. Charlie Coyle gets one, uh, but that doesn't matter because Sammy Blake quickly restores the five goal leads on Calvin Pickard. We're up 7-2, to two. let's call it a day, 7-3 as Michael Kempney gets one. And we take a big victory, a goal and two assists for Dano, two goals for De La Rose, two goals for Vrana. A big, big victory for us, exactly what the doctor ordered. So go ahead and simulate up to, let's go see another, let's get, just get like a month of simulation done until after this all-star break. Let's go see the Dallas Stars. Then it'll be almost time to fix the scouting and we'll get a better idea closer to the deadline if, if we should start being sellers, trading guys like Scandella, not Scandella, but Chieson, Dustin Brown, Brendan Dubinsky, like that. We get shut out by Sandro Tommy and the Ottawa Senators. We win 2-1 to one against Jeremiah Gupta and the Boston Bruins. Beat the Flames 3-2. to two. We're now at 500 with a record of 20-20-5. We lose against Keenan Johnson and the Canadians in a shootout 5-4. to four. Beat the Vegas Golden Knights 5-4 in overtime. Lose 3-1 to Detroit in regulation. Panthers have 30 wins on the year. They beat us 7-1. to one. They, Nice little spanking there. And then a 5-2 loss against the Blue Jackets, who are also a very good team. So we're back to under 500, as we're now 21, 23, and 6, which is pretty rough. Now we're going to go up against the Stanley Cup champion, Dallas Stars, who are at currently at a record of 22, 22, and 5. All right, maybe here's an opportunity to pounce. Let's see what we can do against the reigning cup champions. First period, okay, Duke Silver and Jordan Bennington. Second period, we're down three to one. Palat, Little, and Bluger. We're down three to one. Shots are even four to one. Jade Beagle. Let's just let's just end it. Let's just end it. Five goals on Mers Lincoln's. You're a piece of trash, buddy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What's the reason in even seeing any of these games? If we don't if we don't turn it around, it's just let's just sell at the deadline. Let's just get picks and let's be monsters next year. Let's just be monsters next year, boys. 3-1 loss, 4-2 loss. We're 21-26-6. 3-2 win, at least. Uh, Foodie, a third and a fourth for Hyman and a third. Oh, boy. 3-2 win, 6-2 loss. Bailey Edler and a third for a first in Ville Hanola. That's pretty nuts. 4-2 loss against the Canucks. I keep getting the same offer. I don't want to trade any picks away. Uh, Lazar Sorni. Trades are just flying in over here, man. All these losses. Uh, loss, loss, loss. Win, win. We're 24, 29, and 6. Whoa. Kalorn, Kovalchuk, Achari, and a fourth for that prospect Williams from the Sabres and two seconds. That's quite a haul there. Uh, Johnson and Erickson. To Louis Erickson gets, <laughs> gets traded. Wow. To Pittsburgh for Lekaichev, a third and a fifth. Might be time to, make the, to pull the trigger on a deal over here. I'm not trading Scandella. I like him. Chase Prisky on waivers. Uh, medium top 6D. 76 overall. Not bad. Uh, you know what? Why not? This guy's not bad. I could use him, actually, in, uh, in San Diego for uh, injuries. A second and a fourth for Brown Chase on a third and a fifth. 
Uh, it's not a bad offer, but I don't want to give up a third. Oh boy, if this is loss number thirty, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a pause. Is it loss number thirty? No, it's win number uh, twenty-four, whatever. Bozak and the test two for prospect in the fifth. Yeah, it was win number twenty-five. Oh boy, might as well go up to the deadline. I don't think we're gonna be uh, pushing for anything, so might as well just sell it as we just continue to lose. Eight-two loss against the Rangers. Dustin Brown in a fourth for a third and a sixth. Now that's an, uh, an attempting offer. It's a third next year though, so I think I'll pass. Another loss against the Coyotes. You know what? Let's just do it. Let's sell. We're 25, 31, and six. Let's just sell. Who are we selling? Let's call it a year. Let's acknowledge who we are. Let's sell. Let's come back stronger next year. Negative 13 for Jake Gensel. My goodness. Kubalik, 18 goals, seven assists, negative 17. Pfft, disgraceful. Okay, Chason, you're out. Borgman, negative nine, whatever. <laughs> Brown, you're gone. Tanev, I should trade. He is, man, what a disgrace from Chris Tanev. Negative 19. Oh, what? De La Rose is garbage. Dubinsky's garbage. Goligoski didn't really turn out. Man, things change fast in 20 minutes. Golisic, Jerry, 16, 15, and 4, trying to do his best to stay above water. Merce Lincoln's is absolute dumpster fire. Man, all right, let's make some deals here, boys. Let's make some deals. What will a team want to give me for the beautiful package of Dustin Brown, Alex Chieson, and Brandon Dubinsky? The whole fourth line, just ship him out of town. Would anyone want, I don't think I'm gonna get any offers actually, that's too many players. So let's just try without Dubinsky, just Brown and Chieson. What do we got? I got a third, a fifth, third, a fourth, and a fringe starter, two fifths and Nick Benino, third and a fourth straight up, which is not bad. I can get a eh, fringe starter wouldn't be bad. Third and a fourth, third and a fourth, third and a fourth. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the uh, Panthers. So I gotta decide between the Panthers and the Rangers. Who's the worst team between those two? Panthers and Rangers. Panthers are 36, 19, and seven. And the Rangers are 32, 19, and nine. Yeah, because were there any teams who want to give me a third and a fifth? Because that third, I'd rather take a better third and take a worse pick and have it higher up. But it makes sense that teams that are good want to go after players who could help them push to the playoffs. Brown and Chieson, that'll get four million off the books. Good thing I have, uh, what's his name, uh, Chris Kunitz. I get a third from Vegas or Chicago. Chicago 28, 28, and 5, and Vegas 35, 27. All right, so Chicago's going to be the team that I go with. I just want picks. I don't want that other guy. So let's go to the draft picks. I will take a third and a fourth this season for Brown and Chieson. What do you say, Chicago? Trade rejected. Yeah, it was a third and a fifth they offered me, but let's try a third, a fifth, and a seventh for Dustin Brown and Alex Chieson. Nope, third and a fifth. Trade rejected, okay, not not sufficient at all, as if I'm slapping them in the face to say what I want. But I change it to a sixth and a seventh. Oh boy, just the seventh, okay, just the, th what, what did you offer me before? Was it a third next season, is that why? Just a third, straight up, my goodness. Okay, Brown and Chase on a third next year and a fifth this year, fine, my goodness. Hope these guys are only on one year deals, so hopefully you're garbage next season, again. I, it wouldn't be. Uh, do I have picks this year? I don't have a third this year. That's why I wanted a third this year. Ah, uh, these guys. I need. Okay, you know what? Scrap it all. I need a third this season. I need a third this season. I don't care what team you are. I need a third this season. 2021 third, I could get from Florida, not from New York. Vegas, I could, but I think Florida's worse. But you no, know I'm gonna go with. Ah, you know what? Vegas is. Ah, but it's only for one year, and I don't care that they're close to me. I'm not gonna be competing against them. Let's do it. Dustin Brown and Alex Chieson off the Vegas Golden Knights for a third and a fourth round pick in this year's draft. You know what? Make it a third this year and a fourth next year just to help me out since I already have two fourths in this year's draft. Sorry, one fourth in this year's draft. Sorry, I'll even throw in a seventh. Trade rejected. All right, let's just do a third and a fourth. Trade accepted. Thank you very much, Vegas. You guys are off to the to maybe a team that has a chance. So I'm just gonna call up randoms because I don't want to call up Yamamoto or anybody else who's having a good season. I want to call up just randoms like, uh, not guys who have potential, like whatever, Ligari, I'll call up. 
uh, Shalaric I'll call up. Kurt, you know, Lazar I'll call up. Perfect. And we're also on a one-year deal that I want to move. I think it would be just, uh, you know, I want to keep all these guys. Verana. Let's see, I should almost trade Verana. Goligoski. I might as well trade Goligoski. He didn't work out. Let's just sell, boys. Sell, sell, sell. Who else can we put in? Uh, De La Rose, no. No one wants him. Might as well keep De La Rose, actually, to be honest. But Dubinsky is someone that I'm going to throw in. Who wants Dubinsky and Goligoski? What can I get for those two bellows? Taylor Radish, who is a disgraceful in Anaheim. Don't want him with a two-fourths. A second and Matsupero, no. Two seconds, not bad. Uh, a second, uh, Two-thirds and a low top four prospect, unsigned. Jonathan Darlene and two-thirds. Or Capo Bianco, a fourth and a fifth. I think two seconds make the most sense. Even though New York's a good team, I think two seconds would just be good for both these guys. Uh, what did I give up for Goligoski? Coburn and a third or something? So throw in Dubinsky, get two seconds. Might as well do it. I have the... I would like a forward prospect if it was possible. Let me just go do my due diligence and look through the uh, trade blocks. So I'm between two options for Goligoski and Dubinsky. I could get Jake Lashizen from the Rangers, who's 21 years old, 76 overall, medium top six potential. He's a two-way forward center in the AHL this season. He has 22 points in 54 games. I don't know if he simulates super well, but those are his stats. So he is 21, 76. And the other option is from the Chicago Blackhawks. It would be Raphael Lavoie, who is 20 years old, 72. So four overalls less, one year younger, same potential, medium top six, same position at center, but he is a power forward. And he's currently in the QMJHL, 61 points in 37 games. So doing much better, but obviously in the Q and not in the AHL. He's a power forward. His his defense is lower, his skating is lower, his shooting is lower, his physical is higher. Well, obviously most things are going to be lower. He's 44 overalls less. His poise is higher. I know uh, Le Chizan's poise is 71, his is 75. So I'm between either Raphael Lavoie or Jake Le Chizan. I'm thinking I give the edge to Lavoie because he is a year younger, but the four overall is a big is a big factor. Actually, if anything gives the edge, it's that he's a power forward and not a two-way center. But he doesn't have the best defensive stats, which are a bit concerning. So now that I think about it a bit more, I think I'm leaning more with Lachizan. Jake Lachizan over here, 76-21. I think I'm going to try to make this go through. Could I get Lachizan with a pick for Goligoski and Dubinsky? I don't know, but let's just try it out and see what they say. Throw in a bunch of picks. Trade reject isn't sufficient at all. So let's just try with a fourth too far off. So it's pretty close, actually. I guess we'll throw in Rupp, Kurt Rupp, a fourth round pick. I guess. Take out the seventh, maybe? What did it say? Trade accepted. All right. So thank you very much, New York. I get Jake Lecision. I offload some more people as we're just looking to call this year. Chalk it up in the books. We're selling. Let's just tank and do as bad as we can, I guess. Uh, four years left on Tanev's contract. So let's make some roster moves, sign some free agents, and see what we're going to look like for the rest of this season. So I just got to advance a couple of days here to make uh, sign Patrick Eves to uh, Peyton Krebs' fractured jaw. Are you serious? No rest for the wicked here, man. Just constantly fixing lines. Do we even have any forwards left over here? Not even. It's just defensemen. Yarvinen, welcome to the lineup, my friend. You're going fourth line, baby. Advance another day. Patrick Eves, do you want free money? Maple Leafs have fired their head coach, and Patrick Eves is on board. Okay, so now I can finally trade all the people that I want to trade. Sorry, make all the roster moves that I do without cap being an issue. Okay, that's finally all done. Lachizan can play on the second line under Jeremy Bracco. He can get second line power play, whatever else, because I'm getting pretty fed up of changing all these lines with all these injuries over and over again. In the NHL, Chris Kunitz can now play on the fourth line at 41 years old, a little veteran presence. De La Rose will be centering it, and Curtis Lazar, who hasn't played in the NHL in who knows how long, former first round pick in 2013 to the Senators, can play on our fourth line. Thank goodness. Let's blaze through to the end of the season. I'm going to quickly take a pause to fix the scouting, which will be important since we'll have a good pick this year. And then we'll blaze through the end of the season. Okay, scouts are sent out. We're good to go. Let's finish off this abysmal season. Watch us go on like a 20 win game, stre 20 game win streak. Now that all those changes are made. Uh, Jamel Smith, bruised ribs. Head coach replaces player. My goodness. Peyton Krebs available. It never ends. It never ends. Islanders hire their uh, head coach. The loss of the Flames, loss of the Kings. Let's keep the losses going. Let's just keep it up.
Overtime loss, 2-1 win, 7-6 win. What in the world? Flyers are 31-31-7. and seven. We beat them. Hold on. Joe Hicketts, who's the 76 overall? Two-way deed. No, I'll go ahead and decline that. I just already claimed the other guy. Beat the Flyers 5-1. to one. Beat the Islanders 6-3. to three. Now we start winning, huh? Let's just see one last game this season before the last game of the season itself, which we'll also simulate up against Jinkyo Chong and the Colorado Avalanche. They are 29-29. and 29. So first period up against them, 2-0. Dano and Silver on Michael Hutchinson. Second period, nothing. Third period, we're out shooting them almost double, 28-16 right now. Avalanche, man, I don't know why they can't get it done. They have a, they have Makar and Jinkyo Chung. I forgot who their forwards are in this uh, alternate reality. But Jake Gensel gets a couple, and that'll be all she wrote, as Nolan Patrick adds one on Ms. Lincolns and as we beat the Avalanche 4-1. to one. And we now have a record of, oh, Joel Edmondson, sore hip. My goodness, man. And it has been such a crazy season of injuries. I'm so sick of stopping every two seconds to fix them. I'm turning the slider down. I'm uh, turning it down to 8 on 100. Tried 12, I tried 10, down to 8, man. I don't care if it's not as realistic, but in the real life, people are out like every game with sore feet and flus and stuff. I'm here to simulate a, like one injury every 20 games. I don't want to have to stop every two seconds for my minor league team and all that. Lose to the Lightning in a shootout. Somehow we beat the Oilers, who are the best team in the league, 4-3. to three. Beat the Devils, lost the Coyotes, lost the Sharks, lost the Wild, lost the Canucks. Good. Keep the losses coming, boys. Keep them coming. We shut out the Blues 2 to nothing. We beat the Jets 5-2. to two. We're 35-37-9. Let's get a loss to finish off the season, boys. Let's just help the, 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 the odds as much as we can. Let's go. First period, 2 nothing. Second period, 2-1. to one. Jake Gensel gave us a couple goals. Let's go, boys. Come on, Merz Lincolns. <sighs> Man, Jones. Who's in nuts, actually? Is it? Yeah, it is Merz Lincolns. Come on, Merz Lincolns. Don't put on a show. Don't try to be a hero in this last game of the season. Of course, they start Casey DeSmith. All right. All right. We get a win. We get a win. And watch the team right above us win the lottery. Okay. So we finish the season 36, 37, and 9. And for the first time since... Uh, wow, since my 20 NHL 19 franchise mode, I don't have playoffs to do because I've always either made the playoffs. Yeah, I've always made the playoffs. Even with Anaheim, I always made the playoffs. Let me guess. Chris Kunitz scored six goals. Let's see what he got. Uh, no goals, two assists, negative five. But everyone in the top six just kept scoring. Wouldn't make sense to put my fourth line on the first line or anything because I would just be rigging the system which I don't really want to do, but I don't know. I don't know, man. Let's see where we finished in the entire NHL. In the entire NHL, we finished in 24th place. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth best odds for the number one pick. If we had lost one more game, we would have finished in 26th, but we ended up losing in, uh, ended up in 24th. The Maple Leafs were the worst team in the league at 28, 45, and nine, yikes. Uh, how are our numbers here? We're at a 20.3% power play and an 83.2% pounding kill. Pretty good, actually, if you ask me. Duke Silver led the team in points with 92 points. 47 goal season for the playmaker. I don't know how. Mik uh, actually, it's because he's a created player. Created players always shoot the puck by an exorbitant amount more than anyone else. 363. Yeah. Rantanen gets a point per game at 82. Gensel, 78. Drew, only 72. Well done for him, actually. Uh, Klingberg 63, which is good. Verana turned it up a bit with 44. The third line was abysmal with 31, 31. Look at those negatives as well. Oh my goodness. Chris Tanev, negative 23. Hunt had five points in 20 games. Lazar, two points in 20 games. Wow, really shameful numbers. Goalies, uh, Jerry went 22, 18, and 7 with three shutouts. Whereas Lincoln's 13, 15, and 1. Uh, not really great numbers from anybody. In the entire NHL, let's see who led the way in points. It was... It was Alex Ovechkin with 105 points with 48 goals. Big season from Ovi on the Blue Jackets. Tyler Sagan, 99. Tavares, 97. Tavares and Ovi linking up on the Blue Jackets. Duke Silver's up there with 92 points. Probably the best created player. R Rory Cherry had 83. Massimiliano Bio had 82 with 56 goals. Derek Mongo was a point per game at 82 points as well. Bo Horvat, man, how does he always simulate so well? Even when he was not on Vancouver, now he's on Tampa, 78 points for him. Man, I'd love to see him do that in the real world. Oscar Lindblom, 73 points as an 83 overall. He must be playing with Ovi and Tavares there. Johnny Beats scored 68 points in his second season. 
Not a lot of created players up here who broke 60 points even. Yikes. Keenan Johnson at 62. Leading the entire NHL in goals was Massimiliano Bio with 56, a new scorer on the Capitals since Ovi is no longer there. Uh, he also led the league in shots probably, right? Yeah, exactly. If you take shots, you score. See, this is how <laughs> this is how I can find the created players. Just sort by shots. Because there's a glitch that if you're a created player, you take a ton of shots, which does not make any sense. Jinkyo Chong scored 59 points. Johnny beat 68. Uh, Tony Klingenberg scored 57. Uh, who else here? Ellis Anderson, 43 points for him. D'Angelo Vickers, 41 points. Terrible year, negative 16. Alessandro Girante, 33 points, 20 goals. And the goals are always, if you're a creative player, you score more than you get assists. It doesn't make any sense. Roger Cornell, defensive defenseman, 284 shots. Terrible shooting, terrible skating. Well, the shooting is good for uh, shot power, but terrible accuracy, terrible skating, terrible puck skills. And he somehow takes 284 shots. Oh, man, another EA glitch. Who else took a lot of shots? Who else can we see? Jeremiah Gupta had 25 points with 15 goals. Another defensive defenseman who's ripping the puck. I guess that's pretty much it. Can't find anybody else here. Okay, so sorting by win, goalie wins. Thomas Grice, 43 wins. My goodness, look at those numbers. Carter Hart, Braden Holtby. Once again, a random goalie is going to win the Vezina Trophy instead of someone who's 90 overall plus. Sandro Tommy went 34, 29, and 6 with four shutouts. And where's Eddie Fontaine? Not even anywhere close to being up here. 21, 10, and sorry, 21, 26, and 8. Psh, yikes. Mar uh, Martin Jones, after we traded him, he went on a tear, right? Yeah, 15, 3, and 2 after we traded him. 932 save percentage, 2.15 goals against. What an absolute joke. What a joke. Rookie skaters. Uh, Nicolas Roy with 32 points. Lafreniere put up only 29 and 77. On defense, it was Quinn Hughes with 81 points leading the way. Well, how did Alex Goligoski do after we traded him? Let me guess. He ended up putting up... Uh, did I even trade him? Yeah. Didn't I trade him back to the Hurricanes? Or No, I traded him to the Rangers. Yeah. The Rangers. Yeah. Let's see what he did after he got traded. He got one goal, six assists, negative 10. All right. That's a little bit more like it. All right, that's every, everything we want to look at then. There are the points, there are the uh, whatever. Let's start simulating and let's just end it off, boys. Let's see where our draft pick is going to be. Let's see the progress reports. Let's see all that because there's nothing left in this year. So I'll see you when we have a cup champion. So I skipped over by accident. It is the San Jose Sharks who won the Stanley Cup and we, the San Diego Gulls, won the Calder Cup in five games in the final. We had a 48-14-5, and five, I believe, regular season. And I wanted to check out their points, but because the season is over, it redistributes people on the roster, so I'm not able to see that. So I have to go in the system, I think. And yeah, here, Yamamoto. Wow, he had an, a 72-point season, 22 goals and 50 assists. Big year from Kaylor Yamamoto. Looking for big things next year from him in the lineup. He's up to a 79 overall. So let's see, yeah, modifications. Duke Silver's up to a 90. Yamamoto's at a 79. Kubalik, 82. Rantanen, 91. Jeremy Bracco had a big season as well. He's up to a 79. 65 points from him. Vrana, 83. And that's it for growth over here. For the goalies in the NHL, nothing really in the system, though. So let's see. Kaliev went up to a 72. Lashizen's at a 76. Cole Perfetti's at a 76. Beautiful. Kovalev, that defenseman's at a 76. Ulevi, 78. Uh, some good growth. I'm very happy to see that. Uh, Blomquist, Hunter Jones up to a 71. He can be our minor league backup next year. Very, very good. So some nice growth to end off the season, which makes us all smile. Who did the Sharks beat in the finals here? They beat the Canadians. So Martin Jones carries the Canadians all the way to the conference uh, to the Cup Finals, and they lose in five to the Sharks, who beat the uh, Coyotes in seven. Oilers in five, swept the wild, and then just beat the Canadians in five. My goodness. Martin Jones, bro, what a sick disgrace. I can't believe it. Sharks win the cup. President's Trophy goes to the Blue Jackets, and it was Sharks and Canadians in the cup finals. Individual awards. Ovechkin wins the Art Ross and the Hart. James Norris goes to Quinn Hughes. Lady Bing to Tyler Sagan. Calder to Nicolas Roy with 40 points. Conn Smythe to Dennis Gurianov, all right. Vezina to Thomas Grice, Jennings to Corey Crawford, and Chad Johnson. Hmm, interesting. It's not 2009, is it? Uh, Sibba -ba 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 wins the Bill Masterton Trophy, whoever you are. Coach of the, uh, what are these guys, the Hurricanes? 
wins the Jack Adams. Couturier wins the Selkie. That's rare. I never see a Couturier win these in these Sims. Ovechkin wins the Lindsay, and Bio wins the Morris Richard. AHL, anything for us here? The Rocket, the Laval Rocket had a few people. Uh, here we go. So Peterson wins the Vezina of the AHL, and Yamamoto wins the like Lady Bing of the AHL, and then Peterson also wins the Jennings of the AHL. That's nice. So here's the moment of truth, boys. We have to see, do we move up in the draft with the draft lottery? This is what we've been waiting for and what we've been... Only thing we've been looking forward to pretty much, and we don't. We stay at eight though, okay. So at least no one's jumping us. Toronto, Pittsburgh, and New York. Actually, there is no no winner. No well not no change in order. I've never seen there be no change in order, which is actually good, more realistic. Philadelphia picks nine and ten. But we stay at our eighth pick, which is nice. We have the eighth overall pick in this upcoming draft. Let's see who th that could be. That's probably the uh, Escalinen medium elite left wing. Okay, that's interesting. I'd be interested in that. Similar to Marcus Nasland and NHL Ready. So it could be Joshua Roy, Thomas, Tom, what am I saying, Thomas? Thomas Eskalainen or Robert Bjorkstrand, who is also a medium elite two way forward, similar to Mar, oh, sorry, a defenseman, two way D. Interesting. Okay, so that wouldn't be any, that wouldn't be a bad pick over here. Thomas Eskalainen, a left wing two way forward, perhaps a, a modern day Jesper Helmerson. I don't know. So I'm going to go through the draft, pin people who could be good down the road in the later picks, evaluate who our, what our picks are and where that could be. That'll be for next time when we go through the draft. Let's see retired players. I'm guessing Chris Kunitz and all those guys. Joe Thornton calls it a career with 1,587 points. Big year from him. He was still getting it done in Washington. Louis Erickson, Baquez, Stafford, Horton, all these randoms. So Patrick Eves and, uh, and Chris Kunitz, neither of them retired. Huh. He's going to be 42 next year. Gustafsson, Fast, and Toivonen, three big legends. If you know your NHL, you know what I'm talking about. Honolulu Huskies, just to verify, we had no uh, retirements here? No. Chris Kunitz wants to keep going. Uh, any retirements for coaches? Doesn't look like it. No retirements for any coaches, which is nice. Hainsey and Dominic Moore are both scouts. I never, got, I never signed on um, Patrick Marlowe or whatever as a scout last season. Whatever. All right, so here we are at the draft. We've looked at the progress reports. We've looked at the awards. Going into next season, we have a lot of cap space. We have some people on expiring deals. Uh, Dano does not want to extend, but I'll have to get him. Uh, I'll probably extend Verana and Blay for sure. Yamamoto, definitely. What kind of money would Verana want? 3.3, now he wants 5.3. Sammy Blay was on an entry-level deal, and I want 2.9. Okay, we'll we'll find we'll figure it out. Cole Perfetti, I'll have to sign. He'll probably be in the NHL next year. Uh, Tristan, Jerry, Mers, Lincolns are both signed up. So, so now comes the question of what do I go after this season? If you look at the forwards, sorting by overall, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if I re-sign everyone, that's our 12. But do I want Del Cole and Yamamoto on the fourth line with Bracco? Do I want my top line in the AHL last year being my fourth line this next year? Not really. I'm thinking maybe I trade Kubalik, maybe I trade Verana. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. So I'd like to hear from you guys. Who do you think I should trade? And who? what position should I go after in free agency? Over on the defensive end, one, two, three, oh, 90 overall, beautiful. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I could definitely use some defense help. Uh, I'm thinking definitely trade Chris Tanev. It will depend a bit on who grows, because look at all these guys. Ulevi, Kovalev, Broberg, all these guys in the system could definitely make the team next year. Even Olafson, I don't know. And then the goalie situation, we all know the goalie situation. So you saw the draft. Who do you think I should draft? What positions do you think I should go after? And who specifically do you think I should trade? That is your homework for next episode, boys. And that will determine who I put on the trade block and all that. I'm going to go ahead and pin all the people I like in the scout, in the scouting for the deeper rounds and according to the picks that I have. But for now, that's it for this one, boys. It was a tough, tough season in Honolulu. But I'm hoping just to make it a one-time thing. I'm definitely quite sure that we can make the playoffs next season. So we'll look forward to that. First time in like chronologically in like over a year of like real world time that I haven't made the playoffs with a franchise team. So it's a bit weird for me to go straight to the draft next episode. But thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button as I put out daily NHL, FIFA, and other content. Leave your suggestions in the comments and I will see you in the next one.